That's intense. Could use him on a Temple golf team. <laughs> now, how many times did he practice that is my question. Just to, get, just to nail that. I didn't even know you could do that. Unbelievable. All right, he is wow. the 26th head football coach at Temple University. He's entering, uh, it's unbelievable, entering his third season now on North Broad as the head man. We welcome to the show, to Breakfast on Broad, Coach Matt Rule. Coach, welcome to the show. How are you? Good I'm to right see you. I'm great. Thank you for having me. Oh, awesome. it's been good. It's our pleasure. Yeah. Do you, do you have your guys doing that kind of stuff in practice? I don't think I have many guys that can hit a golf ball very far right now. So. <laughs> I can't hit it off the tee, let alone off of my neck. Unbelievable. All right, so I, I'm, I can't wait. Temple graduate, the full disclosure here. I, I'm very excited for this season. He's all giddy right now. I, I'm, I'm, I'm worked up, I, I can tell you. <laughs> but uh, I can't believe the scheduling and, and what you guys have at home. You kick off the season with your, your alma mater, Penn State. Sure. You also have Notre Dame coming in here. I mean, that's unprecedented to have both of these kind of schools coming in here. Yeah, I think it speaks a lot to our, to our market, the fact that those people want to come in here and, and, and play at the link and, and play in front of all, you know, all, all the people in this area. So I, I'm excited. I mean, you, we want kids to come to Temple to play against the best, and, and those certainly are two of the best. So yeah, and Al's you know, com, by the way. Yeah. T-I-X. Speaking of, you know, how's that going to help you recruiting, especially the South Jersey, uh, Western, Eastern PA, with uh, Penn State coming in and Notre Dame coming in? Well, it validates our message. You know, I, I tell kids, listen, you know, why? Why, why get on a plane and go four hours away, five hours away when you can you can have it all right here? I mean, you can play against the best. Uh, you can go to the next level if you're good enough. Muhammad Wilkerson was a first-round draft pick out of Temple. He proved Ooh, that. Still a great player. Uh, yeah, too. absolutely. And uh, you can get a great education, and you can live in the greatest city in the world. So, so you can do all that at a great university like Temple and play the best. And so this year is going to show all those recruits they can do it here. Now, you co you've coached in college for a long time, but you did have a spell in the NFL as well with the Giants. Mm -hmm. Give me the biggest difference. And you, you clearly Clearly, they're, they're grown men. We get that and, and that kind of thing, the age thing. But what's the biggest difference in the college level and the pro level for you from a coaching standpoint? Well, the biggest thing is, you know, my phone's on 24-7 here, you know, in college. I'm worried about their, their grades. I'm worried about what they eat. I'm worried about, you know, teaching them how to uh, uh, train. I'm worried about, you know, how much community service we do. I, you know, we're really trying to encompass everything in their lives. Whereas in, in, in the pros, uh, those are grown men. And they have people that are there to make sure that their bodies are right, that they have people, you know, there to make sure that their money is invested properly. Mm -hmm. So there it was just all ball. It was, you know, hey, I'm talking to you about your pass set. I'm talking to you about uh, uh, your run blocking and nothing else. So um, the NFL was wonderful. I loved it. But this, this is also a, this is a calling, you know, where you're working with 125 young men in every aspect of their life. So. Right, right, right. And, and saying that, you know, working with these young men, these guys are right on the cuffs of being men and getting into the real world. When you were with the Giants, you know, tell me a little bit about, you know, coaching offensive of lines as opposed to coaching college guys on offensive of lines, force technique and those things. Well, I, I think for me, you know, and obviously, I, you know, I'm a little guy that hadn't played the offensive line. So and that's what I'm saying. That's why I say it. <laughs> he was an old line coach, you know, telling big guys like me what to do. Yeah, so, so not easy. <laughs> no, absolutely. But, you know, so what I tried to do is what I found was this in the NFL, and I didn't know this until I got there. Um, if you know what you're talking about, and you can help a guy extend his career, play a little bit better, help the team win, make a little bit more money, they'll listen to you. Uh, if you don't know what you're talking about, if you're one of those guys who just kind of says stuff or yells a lot and has with no substance, yeah. they tune you out pretty quickly. Yeah. So I tried to just make sure I always, if I found something, I gave it to them. I tried to help them play better. And I, I thought I did that. And I thought they you know, responded to me in, in that way. Let's look at this year's Temple team. And I, I, up and down a little bit last year, um, but I don't think people realize how good you guys were defensively. You were fourth in the nation defensively, gave up less than 18 points per game. What do you need to do from an offensive perspective to be a little bit more consistent this year? I know you have P.J. Walker now in his third season here. What needs to be better offensively for you guys to click on all cylinders? Yeah, you're right. I think I think I said something, saw something last week that said our turnaround from my first year to my second year in defense was the greatest in NCAA history. Now I'm not I'm not a stats guy, but that it's in that you know in, in that world. And we kind of have to do the same thing offensively. We have to find a way to run the football. You know, uh, you watch the Eagles and you see you know they win when the run game's clicking. Yeah. And, and that's where we really struggled last year. We made P.J kind of do everything himself and so we've worked really hard uh, to, re to rebuild the offensive line you know to rebuild the running game and just kind of take some of the pressure off PJ so if you can run the football if we can get our quarterback to play at a high level which he will with a great defense you have a chance to win a lot of games and you bring a lot of players back a lot of experienced players I mean, you know, just to mention the defense you get Tyler Matakevich who's about as good as any linebacker in the country but I think it was like 19 uh, final year eligibility players coming back on your roster that are, that are core players yeah we uh, we lost no we have all returning starters coming mm -hmm. back on defense and I think we lost two on offense yeah. so uh, we lost those kids they were great kids but we're really excited about having that many guys back I mean we've invested a lot of time over these last three years into these kids and so it's their time and, and I think they're gonna play 
you know, they're, 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 they look right now like they're going to play at a high level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, looking at your conference, you know, you guys are going to be up there. You guys have a chance to compete. What do you guys think you're going to lay around in your conference? Well, I, I, told, I told our guys, you know, obviously last year we were bowl eligible, that, which is an mm -hmm. accomplishment. Uh, we didn't go to a bowl, though, mm -hmm. but we were bowl eligible. So uh, I want us to compete every year for a championship. You know, I'm not going to say, hey, we're going to win this many, that many. I mean, I want us to come down the stretch in each game with a chance to win. And I want us to compete for the championship. There's no reason we shouldn't be able to bring a championship, conference championship trophy back to Temple. I mean, there's not one in our building anywhere. And, and that's what uh, I think this, this group of seniors is going gonna, is gonna to contend to do. Well, and this year, your conference, the American Athletic Conference, has a championship game, as a matter of fact, for the first time. Yeah. So, you know, speaking of that championship, you could be playing it. Yeah, it's, and, and, and it's going to be, uh, it's going to have a, a, you know, a, a real feel for us in terms of, you know, on the other side, there's some really good teams. There's Houston Navy's into the conference now. So even once you get to the conference championship yeah. game, your work's not done. <laughs> Uh, which is which is the way college football should be. It should be decided on the field. So we're excited. Is that? I mean, so through no fault of your own, there's been a lot of turnover in terms of conference and moving around a little bit. Has, has that been one of the bigger challenges for you as taking over from Al Golden as the head coach? Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, there was sort of uh, there was sort of you know going into the back into the Big East, and then it kind of changed. And there was a lot of you know uncertainty. But um, I think we, we're happy with where the conference settled. You know, it's it's from a university perspective. I mean, we're uh, we're going to Texas. We're going you know twice you know two teams in Texas, two teams in Florida. Uh, Memphis. Last year we were in New Orleans. So our fans get a chance to go to some great, great cities. I mean, we're not playing in small towns anymore. We're playing in major metropolitan cities. And at the same time, uh, our kids get a chance to take that Temple T all across the country. So when we went out recruiting, we found uh, a lot of people said, oh, I saw you guys on TV and, uh, you know, I, I saw you guys play Memphis. I saw you guys play down in New Orleans. And, and it, it kind of, I, I think, gives us more of a national brand. So. Mm -hmm. All right, just to remind everybody, you got the opener against Penn State, which has got to be kind of cool for you. Absolutely. You, you, uh, Absolutely. Your alma mater up yeah. there, and you got ND coming in, so uh, should be a lot of fun at the link. It's going to be rocking this year in South Philly, and, and AlsTix.com for ticks. Yep. All right, we appreciate it, but here we're not done with you, Coach. All right, we're going to go out and embarrass ourselves in a minute. I, I, that's just my prediction. I I'm thought guessing. I was through getting coached. Coach is going to coach me now. Uh -oh. and, and yeah, uh -oh. don't take it easy on Barrett either. I, I know you're going to be all over me because I'm going to embarrass myself, but don't take it easy on Barrett, Coach. Uh -huh. I'll do my best. All right, it's 648. Stick around because, as I mentioned, he's got his whistle. Coach Rule has his whistle. We're going to go out and do the three-cone drill. You do not want to miss this. Plus, in our next hour, Chip Kelly, and the Eagles head coach, also the Eagles GM. All right, so far, how's he been in both roles? We'll discuss your watching Breakfast on Broad, presented by Virtua. Young, what a list. He ran 4.45 in the 40. He was a 3.94 in the short shuttle. He had one of the best three cones at the combine. That was Eagles head coach Chip Kelly. Not talking about me, certainly. He was uh, <laughs> speaking of his second round pick, Eric Rowe, who displayed those kind of skills in the combine. And Chip talked a lot about height, weight, speed, the importance of uh, players being selected over the weekend and how important this drill is. A good drill to test balance, agility, the three-cone drill. We brought you outside, and Coach Rule, he's got his, his speed gun here. Yep. He's I got, got it the all. whistle. We're ready to go, man. We are ready to go. <laughs> so who's the first victim? I, I mean, mean uh, who's the first choice? I think Barrett's the first. Sarah. You want me to do it? Yeah, I'll go. Let's I'll go, go. Sarah, so you got to go hockey first. Yeah, oh, great. <laughs> Can I do this on skates later? So I'm going up to the first cone and back, yep, right? Yep, absolutely. And then inside and around. You're going to go around this cone? Yep. We get to this cone, we're going to run around here, the cone? Here to the inside. And, and now we're going right. to run outside the cone and finish. I'm ready. Right. You ready? I'm going on your movement. Whatever okay. you're ready. Three, two, one. Nice. Back. Nice. Around the cone. There we go. And finish. Nice. Nice. That was pretty good. That was awesome. What was that? What was that? that I had her at 671. All right. Yeah, so. All right. Okay. That's tough to beat, Sarah. Go, right. Jillian. You got right. this. Ready? On you. Three, two. Yep. This way? Yeah, 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 there you, you go. got it, you got it. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Jillian, I had you at 817. Yes, I'm so fast. <laughs> I'm so fast. <laughs> Uh, if you want me to get you, you want it, you finish it all. I'll go. Yeah, I'll, I'll go now. Come on, Rob. Let's see what you got, man. Go all right. Rob. Here we go. All right, we set. On you, buddy. Come on, Rob. <laughs> He's got a cut. Yeah. Yeah. 684, you're still the winner. 684, you're still the leader. Let's go, Barrett. Come on, Barrett. Come on, Barrett. Come on, Barrett. Let's see what you got, got man. Leg, leg length and the, the experience. I'm saying Barrett's under six. I think Barrett's under six. Woo! Look at, Woo. Oh, look at that shuffle. Whoa! Whoa. Oh, 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 my God. <laughs> <laughs> and he 
finishes anyway like a champ. He's all like right. a champ. He still finished for all. Now, now I'm tired. You want a redo? Yeah, do we, get a, do we get a redo? redo? I, think, I think we should. Let's all get a redo. Let's all get a redo. All right. No, I'll, I'll go first. first. Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm better. I'll go first. You want to do it? Let's do it together. No. You want to do it together? Why? Because I'll, I'll knock you down. I'll knock you down. You just fell. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead, Barrett. You got it. Okay. You got another one in you? All right, Barrett. All right, here we go. Here we go. Fancy feet. Come on, Barrett. Come on, Barrett. Oh, that was good. Woo! Six, seven, six. Six, seven. Nice. All right. I got I to gotta, I gotta, I gotta pick up my game for this. Ready? All right. Actually, let's see. Let's do it again. And. <laughs> and the leap. <laughs> Where's the leap? 7-5-0. Way better All than right, your first time. Yeah, absolutely. Sarah, we got to do it again. Okay. Let's go. See, now that I'm, now that I'm excited. All right. All right, you ready? Go. I got it. Go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, six six eight. Uh, all right, all right. Here we right? go. All right. The first one was six one seven. It was impressive. All right, Rob. <laughs> Come on, Rob. <laughs> you still job, have bro. the lead. Six nineteen. Oh. <laughs> Good job. All right. That was awesome and exhausting. <laughs> so Sarah wins. What do I win? Uh, <laughs> what do you win? That's a we good question. We didn't put a bet on this. No. Uh, I don't think we're getting any scholarships yeah. anytime soon. Yeah. <laughs> I need my inhaler. Yeah, yeah he's a coach. That was, that was awesome. awesome. Hey, thank you very Wait, much. Thank you very much. You do it. Thanks, Ghost. <laughs> you won't. I'll come back another time. Give me some time with the whistle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, so that was a lot of fun. We're all exhausted. We're all probably spent for the rest of the show. But we're gonna do our best. We're gonna see how quickly we get back into the studio. Oh, that might God. be a bigger test than the three right, cone drill. <laughs> I think we can do it though. Bye, Sarah. <laughs>